There's a lot of things in life where actually giving up sometimes is exactly what you need to do. What's up, guys? I hope you're well. I want to talk to you today about giving up and how sometimes it's actually the right decision for you. When we talk about giving up, the the kind of productivity culture now tells us never give up. You can fail, it can go wrong. I might have even said it in one of these videos. Uh, but the one thing you must never do is give up. But it's it's not really true, is it? There's a lot of things in life where actually giving up sometimes is exactly what you need to do. And the, the reason this came up in my head, uh, I, I often refer to martial arts in these videos only because that's my personal background. A lot of my life experience and the life lessons I've learned have come from doing martial arts. And in jujitsu, which is a martial art based on the ability to submit somebody. So you're either manipulating a joint or you're applying pressure so that they can't breathe. You're choking them. And they are required to, in training anyway, to tap, to submit to it, to then stop it. You tap, they let go, you recommence training. Or if it's a tournament, win or lose. You get the idea. And... It came to my mind because I know people and I've seen people who refuse to tap. I don't tap to submissions. And there's a great saying in the uh, BJJ community of either tap or snap. Yeah, if I've got you in an arm bar, I'm hyper extending your elbow joint here and you refuse to tap. Eventually, it's going to snap. You're going to break because you weren't willing to give up. You weren't willing to recognize that at this point, there was nothing more you could do and you're better off tapping so that you can then learn from it, so that you can then develop and grow from it. And this isn't the only example that we've ever seen. I'm sure you can think of many things in your life that you used to do that you no longer do and you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily filled with regret. So a great example, again, I'm using myself only because I can only talk from my own personal experience. When I was younger, my parents put me into drama school and this was for acting, singing, dancing, and I didn't want to do it. And after enough of me saying I didn't want to do it, they allowed me to quit, to stop. From quitting that, I then found martial arts, which I've been doing for the rest of my life. It became a career. It's how I fed my family. Uh, it became an integral part of who I was. But if I didn't create the space by stopping that to then create the room to find my new thing, that would have never happened. Or at least I don't know, but I assume it wouldn't have happened. You see, sometimes giving up is exactly what you need to do because if there is a clear end point where there is nothing you can say or do that's going to change the situation you're in, if you continue to travel down the path that you are on, again, take the example of the arm bar. You are fully locked onto this and no matter how you move your body or manipulate yourself, there's no way out. The only way out is you tap or you snap. Oh, I think I actually just clicked. <laughs> uh, we There's certain situations where that happens. If you're committing crimes and you keep committing crimes and you keep getting caught and you just continue down this path because it's the only path you know, it's the only way you know, well, eventually that's going to catch up with you. If you continue to eat foods that make you uncomfortable and make your belly ache, but you don't know anything else, you only know to drink milk even though you apparently seem to be lactose intolerant, well, eventually that's going to start doing a lot more damage than good. And no amount of positive thinking about you can find a way, there's always a way, is going to change the effects of that on your life. This is also to understand that giving up doesn't necessarily mean that you don't get something from it. I'm going to go back to the armbar one last time. You may give up that position by tapping and the person let go. But the reason that you do that is it gives you the opportunity to try again. 
not necessarily in the exact same position, but it allows you to go back through that process and learn from what made you give up the last time. What happened to put you in a position where you had to give up? It's a learning experience. Certain things in our life have to be left to die. There are certain versions of ourselves as we go through life that we have to yield to dying. I'm now in my 30s. I'm a very different person. I'm a very different man to me in my 20s. And I gave up who that man was to become who I am now. If I didn't give up on that lifestyle, if I didn't give up on being who I was at 20, I wouldn't be with my wife now. I wouldn't have the job that I have now. I wouldn't be living in this house. All of the things that I have right now are due to the evolution of myself through time. And we have to yield to that evolution. So maybe the issue is not about whether or not we should give up. But we certainly need to learn that there are certain times and certain moments in our life that require us to yield, that require us to let go and stop trying to resist all the time. You need both. There's certain things in your life where you need to stand and you need to put up a resistance. You need to stand and say no or yes or whatever it needs to be. But there are certain times and certain moments in your life where you are going to be required to yield, to allow it to happen to you, to allow things to play out the way that they're going to play out, because that's the way it is intended to be. Call it God, call it the universe, call it the cosmos, whatever you like to believe in, whatever helps you sleep at night. But understand that the things, the failures you're going to have and the things that you're going to give up on are going to create space. And this is the big thing that I've learned is when I give up on something, it's not me giving up to then do nothing. I'm never going to, it's not, let's say you have a job, you hate this job. You don't give up on it and then not work. You go get another job. I didn't give up drama school to then do no extracurricular activity after school. I then went and did martial arts. We have a limited amount of time and energy in our day. And if everything that comes into our lives has to then stay and we have to keep it because we can't give anything up, well, then you become a hoarder. You become a collector. You become someone who just keeps everything that comes in. Nothing ever goes out. You build this huge collection, but none of it's all shallow. None of it has any depth. You, you're the jack of all trades. You can do a little bit of everything. You've tried everything and you still try everything, but you've not really got into anything because you can't, because you don't have the space. You don't have the mind space. You don't have the physical space. You're cluttered. So don't be a hoarder of of things. And things, these are, we're talking both the tangible and the intangible. We're talking about what you can see and what you can't see. Remember that you're human. You're not a machine. It's not endless. You don't have an endlessly upgradable processor or memory slots. There's a limit to what you can take in and what you can take on. So certain things, you have to give them up. Certain people will come into your life and you have to give them up. Certain friendships are destined to die. Certain people are destined to be with you for a portion of your life and then they no longer serve you. And it's not selfish. Well, maybe it is a bit selfish, but in all the right ways to let certain things go. To give up on certain people, on certain jobs, on certain hobbies with the understanding that you're giving them up to allow space and to allow time and energy to spend on other things that otherwise you would not have. So sometimes you do need to give up because then you can pick up something else. And as always, take care of yourself.